So in this question, we're told that the nth term of a sequence is given by the expression a n squared plus b n, where a and b are integers. We are also told that the second term of the sequence is minus 2, and that the fourth term of the sequence is 12, and we need to use this information to find the sixth term of the sequence. So we know what form the sequence is of, we've got the form here, but then we have the two unknowns, a and b. So in order to find the sixth term of the sequence, we can calculate and work out what the unknowns are, the integers a and b, we can find these integers, and then we can substitute in n is equal to 6 to find the sixth term of the sequence. So we have the second and fourth terms, so we can substitute these values in as well to work out the values of a and b, and we can solve a couple of equations simultaneously once we've put them together. So if we start with the first one, we know that the second term of the sequence is minus 2, and we could kind of use a bit of notation here and just call the second term u2. So un is just the general term, the nth term of the sequence, u2 is going to be the second term. And we know that has to be of the form a n squared plus b n. So u n is equal to a n squared plus b n. However, u2 is when n is equal to 2. So we can substitute 2 in for n. So substitute 2 in here and 2 in here. We end up with a multiplied by 2 squared plus b multiplied by 2. And these are separate here. And then we can simplify that, so 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be 4 multiplied by a, so 4a plus b multiplied by 2, which is 2b. So u2 is equal to 4a plus 2b, but we also know that u2, because it's the second term of the sequence, is minus 2. So we can equate that expression here to minus 2. And then we can do the same over here with u4 is equal to a multiplied by n squared, which n is in this case 4, so a times 4 squared, plus b times n, which is 4, so b times 4, so that's going to be 4 squared, which is 16 times a, plus 4b, and this time u4 is equal to 12, so we have that equal to 12. Now we kind of have these two separate equations here. So we have 4a plus 2b is equal to minus 2. We can call that equation 1. And then we have 16a plus 4b is equal to 12. And we'll call that equation 2. And in order to solve these for the values of a and b, we can solve them simultaneously. So we want to eliminate one of the variables. And we do that by basically scaling one of them up or down so that we have the same number of either a's or b's in each equation. So here I can quite easily see that if we've got 2b in this equation, we could simply multiply this whole equation, so both sides of the equation, 1, by 2, and then we'd have 4b, which we have over here as 4b, so then we can cancel out the 4b's and solve the equation simultaneously. So if we basically double the expression, double equation 1 here, we end up with 8a plus 4b is equal to minus 4. So I've multiplied the 4a by 2, the 2b by 2, and the minus 2 by 2. So we multiplied everything on either side of the equation by 2. And we now have this new equation here and equation 2. And we can use this. So if we call this one equation 3, we can do equation 3. Actually, if we do equation 2, subtract equation 3. The 4b's are going to cancel out, leaving us with just the values of a and some numbers. So we'll be able to solve this for a. So if we take equation 2, which is 16a plus 4b equals 12 and just right below it, equation 3, which is 8a plus 4b equal to minus 4. We can then subtract the bottom one from the top one. So we can do 16a minus 8a, and that gives us 8a down here, 
and then we can do 4b minus 4b, which just gives us 0. And then on the right hand side, we have 12 minus minus 4, which is going to be the same as 12 plus 4, because we're subtracting a negative. So 12 plus 4 is 16. So we have 8a is equal to 16. And if we divide both sides by 8, a is equal to 2. And then we can just substitute this value for a back into an equation. So if I take this back into equation 1, for example, we could have 4a plus 2b is equal to minus 2. So 4 times the value of a, which we just calculated to be 2, plus 2b is equal to minus 2. So 8 plus 2b is equal to minus 2. We can subtract 8 from both sides to get 2b is equal to minus 2 minus 8. So minus 10. Divide both sides by 2 and we have b is equal to minus 5. So we've now used this information and solved these equations simultaneously and have found values for a and b. So we now have this kind of nth term of the sequence and I'll just write that out. So un is equal to a n squared, so 2 n squared plus b n, where b is minus 5, so minus 5 n. Now we want the sixth term of the sequence and that is going to be the term when n is equal to 6. So u6, that's when n is equal to 6. So we have 2 times 6 squared minus 5 times 6, and we can just put brackets around those. So that's 2 times 36 minus 30, and that takes us to 72 minus 30, which gives us an answer of 42 here. Now, as for how the marks are awarded for this question, the first marks for a process to find an equation in A and B. So for finding one of these original equations here, for example, by substituting in the value of u2 or u4. Second mark is for a process to solve the simultaneous equations, which we've done here. The third mark is for the correct values of a and b of 2 and minus 5. And then the fourth and final mark is just for the correct final answer here of 42. So now in this part of the question, we are given the first five terms of a different quadratic sequence. And the terms are 0, 2, 6, 12 and 20. And we're asked to find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence. So again, we're told that this sequence is also a quadratic sequence. So the nth term, we could just write out a general form just so we have a general idea of what we're looking for. So similarly to the first one, un, so the nth term of the quadratic sequence is going to be of the form an squared plus bn plus c. And this n squared is really important because that's what makes it the quadratic sequence. So this is kind of a general formula for the quadratic, a quadratic equation anyway. So that's where that comes from. Now to find these values of a, b and c, and therefore find the nth term of the sequence, we need to go back and use a method to work through the question and find the relationship between the terms. So if I just write out the terms again, 0, 2, 6, 12 and 20, to find the coefficient of n squared, so a in this case, we need to look at the second difference between these terms. And this is just kind of the method that you have to know and use to find this. So the difference between 0 and 2 is plus 2. Between 2 and 6 is plus 4. Between 6 and 12 is plus 6. And between 12 and 20 is plus 8. And that's the first difference. As we can see, it's not constant. So it must, the nth term must be of a quadratic form because not a constant common first difference. But if we then look at the second difference here, the difference between 2 and 4, we're adding on 2. Between 4 and 6, we're adding on 2 again. And between 6 and 8, we're adding on 2 again. So we now have a constant difference. We can use this to find the value for a in this instance. And what we do is take the second difference and divide it by 2. 
So 2 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 1. So a is equal to 1 in this instance. We now just need to find the kind of value of b and c, so the bm plus c part. And for this bit, we can just solve it as it was a, we can kind of manipulate it beforehand and then solve it as so it's a linear um, sequence that we have here. So what we need to do is subtract one lot because of, there's one lot, there's one lot of n squared because a is one. So we subtract one lot of n squared from the original sequence that we have here. So I can write it out again. 0, 2, 6, 12, 20. And then we have another column here. So n squared, if I just write that here. So at this point, n is 1. So 1 squared is 1. And then 2. So 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. And 5 squared is 25. So now we need to subtract the n squared part from the original sequence that we have here, so from each term. So when n is equal to 1, we need to take 0 and subtract the 1. So I'm just going to write that out below. So 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 2 minus 4 minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. And now the method that I like to use is the dino method. And we can just find an equation for this linear sequence that we have here. So using the dino method, we first need to find the difference. So the di part of dino stands for the difference. And if we look, we're subtracting one. Moving from one turn to the next, we're subtracting one each time. So the difference is equal to minus one. And how the dino method works is di and then no. So we take the difference, which is minus 1, put an n after it, and then we're going to add on the zeroth term. So this here is the first term of this sequence. And if we're subtracting 1 when we're going this way to the second, third, fourth term, if we want to go back to the zeroth term, we're going to add on 1. So we're going to take the minus 1, which is the first term, add on 1, and that just gets us 0. So actually, this is just going to give us minus 1n, which is minus n plus 0. So this last part is just minus n. And then we need to remember to add on the original value. So we had a is equal to 1. So we've got 1 lot of n squared. What we've worked out here is that the coefficient of n is minus 1, so b is minus 1, so we need to subtract n, and then c was 0, because the minus 1 and plus 1 cancelled out. So as for how the marks are awarded for this question, you're going to get the first mark for a kind of correct general method if you come to the conclusion that n squared is going to be a term on its own here, so if a equals 1, you'll get the mark for that. And then the second mark is for the correct final answer that we have here.